Now I know I've overused the expression that the crossover is killing the car, but it's also killing the minivan, which is one of the reasons why I think that this kind of vehicle is the new millennial minivan. Our spotlight today is on the 2018 Kia Sorento EX V6. We're gonna be showing you everything about this car, taking it on a drive and going over everything else you need to know if you're in the market for a vehicle like this. And we're gonna be showing you why this is the new minivan for a new generation of car buyers. Now, Kia Canada believes that the EX V6 here is gonna be their biggest seller, fitting right in the middle between the other trims available on the Sorento. Now, the first thing we do notice when we're taking a look at this car is it does have halogen projector headlights. They are bi-projector halogen headlights, so your high beams have the same level of quality to them, but we really do find that LED technology works a whole lot better, and when we are driving this vehicle at night, you do really notice that the lights are not that great. So it would have been nice if they made the option for either xenons on this trim or to go up to the full LED lighting that they have on the higher trims. I think at this point, as we've mentioned with other videos, it is more of a safety thing. Moving around the rest of the car, just like the other Kia vehicle that we have featured that is more or less fully loaded, the Kia Optima, the mirrors are power folding and they will automatically open up as you approach the vehicle. There is also contact points on the front doors so you can open up the doors and unlock them from either side. And then around back, you do have a power opening lift gate, just like you would find on pretty much any other crossover on the market today. And you can open or close the back seats. You can either pull them and you can also flip the center row, just the top of it down with little controls here. And the other thing I noticed about the rear here, there is no center row HVAC settings. There's just two vents in the center console, but you do have air conditioning control here at the back. There's two vents for the rear passengers and they can control whether or not the air conditioning is on and at what speed it'll be blowing. So little features there if you do have a bigger family and you are using those back seats. Now moving into the inside of this car, it is a pretty straightforward design. You've got a smaller navigation screen up the top and actually there is no navigation that comes embedded, but you do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So it is a plus in that sense, but it would be nice to have navigation with it. You do have dual zone automatic climate control in the center. And again, you can control that absolute back end air conditioning from here. And you have front heated seats and a heated steering wheel. Aside from that, there's really not much that has surprised us here except for the wood trim. It's actually quite nice. It runs along the center console here. But the thing I really like is the large piece of wood that goes along each door card here. It actually wraps around the entire top of the dashboard. I know it's hard to see on the video as uh, just because of the lighting in here, but it is actually really nice. There's quite a bit of wood in here. And also the rear seats have the same level of wood trim along the doors and the controls for them. So I think it is nice to have those features. The dashboard is quite plastic though, like we've seen on other Kia models. And uh, we don't have features like Homelink or a power moonroof on top. Now moving to the back seats, as we mentioned, there is no controls back here for your HVAC. You've basically just got vents, but you do have power outlets like that. And I do notice that the armrest here, it does stop at some point, but it does feel a little low if the seats aren't pushed back a little bit. But overall, the space is good here for adults or children. If you have a car seat, we did find it is quite easy not only to get the car seat in, but it's also very easy to get the kids in and out of the car. And as I mentioned with the front area, you do have a wood trim around the power window controls back here, along with a nice strip of wood along the door cards. Not only that, you do have manual rear window sunshades, which is a nice feature to have, again, if you have kids. But enough about the interior of this car. I think you and I both want to see how this car actually drives on the road. So let's get to it. So this is not the first Kia Sorento that we've driven. In fact, before doing test drive, we drove plenty of them. The 2015, 2016, and 2017 models have all been driven by us and actually reviewed by us on other publications. So we have a pretty good idea of what's going on with the 2018 Sorento. Another thing is, to be fair, they did announce the 2019 at the Canadian International Auto Show last week. So it really makes it feel like, what's the point, right? You know, a lot of people are gonna be looking at that new model and think, well, why am I gonna buy the 2018? The new version has already been announced with all the new features and all the new design elements that they've put into it. So why am I gonna waste my time buying this? Well, to be fair, most people don't really care. 
uh, the average consumer, which is what this specific trim is targeted towards, doesn't care about all those bells and whistles. They just need a mid-size crossover SUV that can fit seven passengers and look pretty good doing it. And I have to say that the Kia Sorento continues to be one of the best looking crossovers in this segment. And uh, it really does have the features that most people are looking for. Like I said, Kia expects this to be the most popular seller. You have heated front seats and a heated steering wheel. You do have rear window sunshades, which is nice. And then really the rest of the vehicle, the ride is pretty comparable across the rest of the Sorento line. It's not like they have a sport version or sport suspension or anything like that. Really what you get mechanically is the same. The real benefit of this trim is that V6 engine. It isn't as powerful as some of the other V6 engines in this segment, but it certainly gets the job done and it is a good option for those who need more power than something you get out of an inline four. You know, a lot of manufacturers now, like Mazda, they only offer that. They don't have a V6 anymore. So the fact that there is that option here is not bad. If you are driving, you need to hammer it down. We're in sport mode. Yeah, it'll find the gear pretty quick. It'll get you up to speed, no problem. And we'll do from a dig in a little bit later. Now we do find that the ride is comfortable enough. You know, it's smooth on the road. You do feel a little bit more of the bumps. And we do hear a little bit more of the road noise than we do in other vehicles. When we're on the highway, it almost sounds like one of the windows is open a little bit, especially on the driver's side here. So I don't know if it's just something with the insulation. Maybe the glass isn't as insulated as they are on other vehicles, but it just sounds a little noisier than we have heard in other vehicles. We are in sport mode now, but we have been in eco mode pretty much the entire time we've been driving it. We've averaged 10.2 liters per 100 kilometers, which when you look back at the midsize crossover SUV showdown we did about a month and a half ago, this is actually surprisingly efficient in comparison to those other three midsize three row crossover SUVs. Now the other thing you notice too, going around a corner, you do kind of roll a little bit. There's more body roll. Uh, there isn't anything to stabilize the vehicle like that. So you do notice little things like that. But again, for the most part, people are gonna be driving this with a lighter foot. They're not gonna be going around corners overly fast. It still is an SUV. But those are some important things to note about the mechanics of the vehicle that really do differ from some of the other vehicles in this segment. Okay, we're in sport mode. Gonna go from a dig. It, it's a crossover. I mean, what do you expect? We just hit 100 a second ago. I'm not gonna time it. You know, you're not really, you don't care about the zero to 60 time in something like this. The idea is it's good to get onto the highway. We've had no issues getting onto the highway. If you have to pass somebody, it's got the power to do it. It's not as powerful, like I said, as some of the other V6 engines in the segment. So if you are looking to buy a crossover like this because you need to tow something, maybe you have a boat, a little motorhome, a little trailer, something like that, it should get the job done. But you do definitely wanna check the specs of what you're towing with the recommended specs for this vehicle just to make sure that it's going to work out because you really don't want to be blowing your transmission because you were both towing a massive boat. This really does feel like the minivan for younger families. You get a good amount of interior space for seven passengers and cargo along with that optional V6 engine. This setup is really what most larger families are looking for. A large all-wheel drive vehicle that can fit everyone and look good doing it. It's no wonder why in 2018 only four minivans exist in the North American market, which was once littered with badge-engineered minivans from almost every manufacturer. Overall, we've always liked the Sorento as a vehicle. It offers creature comforts you need at an affordable price. The rear side window sunshades are a nice plus, along with Kia's excellent infotainment system. The V6 engine is also a great option for those looking to get a little more power out of their mid-size crossover SUV. There are some things to note though. We are disappointed with the halogen headlights as their nighttime performance was quite bad. Most manufacturers are also offering an 8-speed transmission now, especially on their V6 models. The lack of a center row climate is also a downside given this vehicle is really targeted towards families who will often have passengers in the center as the rear AC unit only seems to operate the two vents for the back passengers. The competitive price point for the Sorento puts it in the crosshairs of the Ford Explorer and Chevrolet Traverse instead of the Japanese automakers. There's certainly a lot of good with the Sorento and we really do see this as the millennial minivan for a new age of car buyers. 
Thanks for watching this episode of Test Drive Spotlight on the 2018 Kia Sorento EX V6. As always, your support helps make this show possible. By liking and sharing it, we can reach new viewers and it allows us to continue producing this show. Let us know what you think about the Sorento by leaving a comment below and we'll do our best to answer any questions about it. You can visit our website at perpetualradio.ca for the written reviews of the vehicles we feature, which includes a more in-depth perspective along with photos of the vehicles. We also invite you to follow me on Twitter and Instagram as at Niall Livesey to see what we're doing in advance as we often film these cars weeks before they get published. Until next time, take care.